a multinational force has launched a series of strikes against Colonel, Colonel Gaddafi's forces there in the country. The coalition is calling it Operation Odyssey Dawn. 112 cruise missiles have been launched from American and British ships and submarines in the Mediterranean, hitting 20 sites. Jets from a number of countries have targeted Colonel Gaddafi's ground forces. The Libyan government reports there has been civilian casualties and it's all part of efforts to enforce a no-fly zone backed by the UN. The French president was the first to order strikes around the rebel-held city of Benghazi to prevent attacks against civilians. Russia said it regrets the decision to take military action in Libya. Well, uh, for more on the developments there, let's now cross live to Paula Sleer, who's in the capital, Tripoli. Paula, bring us up to date on those strikes. What are you hearing from inside Libya at the moment? Well, there's just been a blast of gunfire, which you heard behind me here in the capital city, Tripoli. It's not immediately clear what's going on behind, but a short time ago, there were protesters here. So we certainly are starting to feel the effect of this military strike and of the reaction from the Gaddafi regime here from the capital city. Now, so far, we are hearing that more than 20 sites have been hit by these warplanes from the international community. Increasingly, it does seem as if this is an operation that will be happening in the east and the west of the country. The French Defence Ministry has confirmed that some 20 French yeah. planes the have been used and that they've been hitting the tanks bomb. and military personnel mm -hmm. vehicles. Now, that operation has been concentrated largely in the rebel-held town of Benghazi. And the latest word there from rebel fighters is that Gaddafi forces have been pushed to the outskirts. Now, at the same time, we're hearing from the United States that it is playing a leading role in these operations, but not necessarily leading the operations per se. What we know, though, in terms of the U.S. assistance, is that already they have launched preparatory strikes from cruise ships. We know that there are three submarines and 25 American ships at this point in the Mediterranean, and that U.S. Tomahawk missiles have landed in the west of the country in Tripoli and in Misrata. Now, Libyan state television has been reporting for the last few hours that there are heavy civilian casualties. It says that these are happening here in the city of Tripoli, and I can tell you that we have heard a few ambulances driving Past. It says they are also happening in the town of Benghazi. They also say that there's been a strike on fuel stores in Masrata. Now, the British Air Force has joined the operations. It's not yet clear exactly what they will be doing, but we know that they have the capability to hit targets and also to assist in surveillance. It is worth also making the point that the Pentagon has stressed that this is only the first phase of what they're calling a multi-phased operation and that currently there are no American planes flying overhead. Paula, what kind of reaction has there been from Libyans to this intervention, which is now well underway? Well, particularly these reports that we're hearing from Libyan state television of heavy casualties, this is starting to worry people on the ground on both sides. You do not want to see an operation like this that starts as a no-fly zone to be expanded and broadened into something that lasts years. It is widely understood that the Libyan Air Force is not significant, and so it shouldn't be very difficult for the international community to enforce a no-fly zone. But the question is whether or not, under the guise of humanitarian assistance and under the guise of any kind of other arguments, this operation will not continue for years. The last thing people here want to see is what they call foot soldiers on Libyan soil. This is something that not only the government, but certainly the rebel groups themselves would detest. One of the problems that is facing this whole operation is how difficult it is to discern on the ground who are civilians and who are legitimate Gaddafi targets. If you look, for example, at a pickup truck, it's very hard for a pilot to know whether the people on the truck are actually soldiers or whether there are people fleeing from Benghazi. And we know that so far as many as 300,000 people have fled Libya, many thousands again today making their way out of the Benghazi city because they are afraid of the developing violence on the ground. And certainly what we're seeing is an increase in violence, an increase in airstrikes, and, and what we expect is a, a growing response from the Gaddafi regime itself. Paula, thanks very much indeed for that. Live from Tripoli there in Libya, our correspondent Paula Slear. Well, no doubt we'll be hearing more from Paula throughout the day here on RT. In the meantime, world powers decided to enforce the no-fly zone at a summit in Paris, where they were meeting to work out a course of action there in Libya. And our Europe correspondent Daniel Bushell has been following what happened there.
Reports have confirmed that some 20 warplanes are already on Libyan airspace from the French side, which has been the most active in this, uh, starting with the summit and now in military action. They've sent Rafale fighter jets, Mirage fighter jets, also surveillance aircraft. They say that their key concern is to enforce a no-fly zone over Libyan airspace, in effect grounding Colonel Gaddafi's jets and helicopters, and that their number one uh, concern is the civilian population in and around the area of Benghazi. And to that effect, the first military operation will be to enforce the no-fly zone over the east of Libya, where the rebel strongholds are 100 by 150 kilometre uh, area. It comes after a decision at the Paris summit where it was decided that uh, the powers would go in and it was attended by the heads of the United Nations, the head of the Arab League, also the Emir of Qatar, several foreign ministers of Arab nations, for example Morocco and the United Arab Emirates. The Arab states, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Jordan and the United Arab Emirates have said they do back the deployment of a no-fly zone over Libyan airspace and the Arab states will play a supporting role, obviously key their support in the region. Other EU powers are now falling into line. We can confirm Italy has offered seven of its air bases that were used by NATO previously. Of course, Italy just across the Mediterranean from Libya, one of the key uh, air bases that will be used by Western powers. And we're also seeing other nations coming out and saying they support this. For example, Norway, Netherlands, here in Belgium. We've also seen Canada saying it's fighter jets are already uh, in the region and ready to be deployed within two days. They just need to set up there. And Western leaders, EU leaders, say they do support this campaign. David Cameron of the UK, also Angela Merkel of Germany, despite Germany's abstention of the UN vote for a no-fly zone, she says she does back military intervention now. They just won't be sending forces themselves. Germany won't be sending forces, but it does support this. Well, that was